Let's talk about soup. You know, when I was young, we went to a Chinese restaurant here in Vancouver. There's a lot of Chinese restaurants in Vancouver. And for the first time in my life, I tried cream soup. It was cream of mushroom, I believe. And it was the best thing in the world. I love cream soup to this day. Cream of mushroom, cream of corn, a lot of other stuff like that. And whenever it's on the menu, you know, I try to give the cream soup a little bit of a chance. What was that? Wait, we're not talking about... Oh. Oh, okay. Um, we're not talking about... Like, the soup soup. We're talking about the Ilya Mikheyev soup. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, Toronto fans. Isn't it funny how your nicknames come about here? Campbell, of course, having the Campbell soup label, and then you have Ilya Mikheyev being a soup guy, too. Let's talk today about Ilya Mikheyev because he was in the news the previous 24 hours. All this came about from Elliot Friedman because Elliot Friedman posted himself a pretty interesting article last night. And by last night, I mean it was literally past midnight for Toronto fans, and at 9.53 p.m. over here in Vancouver, it was an article talking about a whole bunch of other stuff. We're not going to be highlighting most of the stories in this, because I think all this stuff is kind of video fodder for separate videos, which is good for me because I do need video topics because now it's the off-season and there's nothing to talk about. But for Ilya Mikheyev, a Toronto Maple Leafs free agent signing back from 2019, Friedman had himself a really interesting update that we're going to be going over here in today's video. According to several sources, Toronto winger Ilya Mikheyev has asked for a trade following the 2020-2021 season. But what is important to the story is that the Maple Leafs made it clear they do not want to accommodate this request. With Zach Hyman and Joe Thornton gone from the left wing, the organization told Mikheyev they consider him a key part of their team and they're counting on him to have a big year. Neither Kyle Dubas nor Dan Milstein were willing to comment. At issue, it appears to be his role in ice time heading into the final year of his contract. His 14-13 per game last season was 8th among Toronto forwards, which, I mean, if you're doing the math there, that would have been a top 9 spot. McCabe's impressive 23-point, 39-game rookie campaign was cut short by an accidental but serious cut to the wrist, but he had 7 goals and 17 points in 2020-2021, going pointless in the playoffs. He's a talented guy, and if he could get his shooting percentage higher, it was 6.5% last season, it could be a real breakthrough for him and the team. Ilya Mikheyev has requested a trade, the Toronto Maple Leafs have rejected that trade request, and now we're talking about the entire profile here today because it does put up some really interesting ideas as to the Maple Leafs and their direction and their cap and why Mikheyev is seen as a key part of this team. Let's just go over the profile right here for Soup himself before we get any further into the topic. Ilya Mikheyev, 26 years old, 1994, October 10th birthday. He's 6'2", 194. He's a left-handed winger who plays on the left side, and he's a guy who was undrafted in his NHL career. Now, he was born October 10th, 94, meaning that he would have been eligible with the 1995 guys, meaning that he would have been eligible for the 2013 NHL draft. In 2012-2013, he was playing in the MHL and he wasn't really all too impressive, so he hadn't been drafted. And as his career went on in that time frame, he didn't really produce a whole bunch to the point where NHL teams were like, oh, we need to draft this overage guy. He was in the MHL and the KHL and all that stuff, but by the time he had established himself as a full-time KHL forward, Hey, that's when he started to put his name on the radar for Avangard Omsk in that league. In 2018-19, he had himself 45 points in 62 games played and 23 goals. He displayed himself off as a really speedy guy who had a really good shot and he had all these goals and all that stuff, which is why there was a free agency bidding going on for Mikheyev back in 2019. Now, the Maple Leafs, they win these all the time. Ozhganov, Barabanov, Zaitsev, Mikheyev, they win these KHL free agency bidding wars all the time. But Mikheyev was the next in line to be attributed to this idea here. And Friedman is right. He had a fantastic rookie season, 23 points in 39 games played. And he had himself a really good goal scoring streak to start off the year. The guy just could not be stopped. He was breeding new life into a forward core that already boasted some really good names that in which you definitely do not need me to tell you who they are. But as it was noted here, skate cut, laceration, really bad, really ugly to see, and he missed out the remainder of the season. When he came back, it was already the bubble, and he had zero points in five games. Oof. The next season, though, he severely underproduced 17 points, 54 games played. He wasn't really playing all too much, 14 minutes of ice time. He had a six point something percent shooting percentage, which is not great, and he went pointless in the postseason as well against the Canadians. He has played a total of 13 playoff games for the Leafs, and he has zero points, which is unfortunate, but you know what? It's not 
terribly difficult, in my opinion, to see why the writing was on the wall here for a trade request to have even been made. Mostly because for Ilya Mikheyev, if you take a look at the progression, you know, you go from one year where you're absolutely on top of the world, everybody's in love with you and what you're doing, he's scoring goals, the fans love him, they discover his love for soup, and that's a really big deal for a lot of people for some reason. And then you go from that to a 6% shooting percentage year, and you're not really getting played as much as you would like to. Zach Hyman is on the top line, he's scoring a whole bunch of goals, and eventually Ilya Mikheyev was like, okay, I'm 26 years old. Do I really want to play in this role where I'm behind a whole bunch of other guys, I'm not really being able to get my game on? And sure, it's only been one year of not being as good as you would have probably wanted him to be. And maybe for some people, they would have been like, okay, why the hell would you request a trade then? I mean, you still have yourselves a lot more time to go on. You have another year on your contract. But for Ilya Mikheyev, I mean, different people have different values, right? So maybe there's something else in his mind that says, okay, maybe I just kind of don't want to play here in Toronto anymore. Maybe it's the shooting percentage. Maybe it's the ice time. Maybe it's the fact that they cannot win any playoff series. And every time they play in the playoffs, they embarrass themselves. But for Ilya Mikheyev to go out there and request a trade, it makes sense why the Maple Leafs would say no. Because they do need this kind of guy to be their guy. He's only making $1.6 million till the end of this season. And with the Maple Leafs in their cap-strapped last dance, last chance kind of situation over here, heading into the 2022 playoffs, hoping to make an impact, they need every dollar they can get to produce above that dollar. With the overpayments done to Marner and the entire, oh, they have so much percent of their cap tied up into three players kind of thing going on there, they need the rest of their money to really work for them past the dollar amounts that they're worth. And for Ilya Mikheyev, he's a guy who, if he does come back to form, I mean, look, 23 points in 39 games played, that's his first season rookie year 2019-20 pace. If you do the math on that, he was on pace for 48 points. If you get 48 points out of a $1.6 million player right there, that is playing above your dollar amount value. That is the Jason Spezza kind of thing just with a younger player, and this is the kind of thing that the Leafs need more of in their bottom six, in their middle six actually as well. And it's kind of the bigger debate here because it definitely falls into Toronto's overarching question, which is, who else is going to play in this top six? You have Marner, Matthews, Nylander, and Tavares. Okay, those are four guys right there. Who takes up the other spots on the wing? Is it Nick Ritchie? Is he a top six forward? Is it Nick Robertson? Do you want to play him there right away? Or is it Ilya Mikheyev, who has displayed NHL-caliber speed and an NHL-caliber shot that knows how to produce at this level and who was a fan favorite earlier on? He had a bad season last year, I get that. And maybe a bad season is all it takes for a guy like Mikheyev to decide, man, I want to play somewhere else, I don't want to be here anymore. Maybe that's all it takes, but when it comes to the Maple Leafs and their points of views, they do need this kind of guy. He is cheap. He is a lot better than the number suggested for last season, and we know he can be better. Now, this experiment, not going to say it's guaranteed that it's actually going to work. Maybe next season he produces even worse than he did in the most previous season of play. Maybe it's the entire Nikita Zaitsev route where all these Russian guys that the Maple Leafs get, they do okay at the start of their careers in Toronto, but then they start to do worse as time goes on. Maybe it's like that. I don't know. Maybe there's this weird thing going on in Toronto and something in the air. I'm not really too sure, but either way, talk to me in the comments about this entire Ilya Mikheyev thing, the idea that he requested a trade and that the Maple Leafs said, no, we don't want to trade you. We need you. You are going to be our guy for us because we're going to play you more than 14 minutes a night. You are probably going to go out there and shoot above 6% because we saw it in your rookie season season, you have NHL caliber speed, you have all these assets, you have all these skills, it's just you weren't able to produce in the proper way last season. They want to see this guy succeed. They need this guy to succeed. They need all of the dollars on their team to work above their pay rates. And Ilya Mikheyev is one of the prime examples of a guy who can do that. Now, he probably needs to start producing in the playoffs. I mean, two straight years of zero points in the postseason in the bubble, and then against Montreal when you had a 3-1 to one lead, you blew it, lost in Game 7, they went to the finals. It was not great, but you do want to expect a lot more out of all of these players, not just McKayev. Obviously, I'm singling him out because he's the guy who requested a trade. But either way, talk to me in the comments. What do you think about this thing over here? The Friedman article, it will be in the description, so go ahead and read that if you want to go ahead and read that. There are a few other tidbits as well to Brady Kachuk and Pedersen and a few other things over there. Jack Eichel, too. I forgot that one. That's the biggest one over there, isn't it? Talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Elon McKayev? I hope you enjoyed this Rishash Rolls and I9. And... Bye.